Morning. Morning, Chuck. Good it's, to see you again, Austin. It's been a while. Good to see you. This is my friend Rondo Enders. Rondo, well, welcome, pleasure welcome. To meet you. Pleasure to meet you. It's uh, kind of a neat day. Today I get to go fishing with uh, Pro Staffer Austin Moser on our home waters, which is kind of different. I think you're kind of excited, looking forward to a boat ride today. I am, I am. This is cool country here. I've never never been here and done this, and I've always wanted to. This looks like a lot of fun. So, so it could be, it's going to be a fun day. It's going to be 90 plus degrees here in the bottom <laughs> of the canyon. I was telling uh, uh, Zach, when we were coming in, it's a lot like being in the bottom of a barbecue grill because <laughs> we got lava rocks on each side. Uh, and uh, we're here in the morning, we kind of waiting for the dams to do, uh, we like to fish a little bit later in the morning when the water's coming up, the sturgeon seem to bite a little bit better there. So it's about time to get on the water. So cool. enough said, we're, let's go do this thing. All right. Yeah. Made it here onto the shore on the on the Snake River. How'd you like that boat ride up this morning? Oh man, that was a lot of fun. That's something I've always wanted to do, and uh, I really thank you for taking me on this deal. This is this is a cool thing. Yeah, it's interesting. As we were riding up, I was kind of watching you, and it was really rewarding to see you filming and you know filming the rapids, and and it reminded me when I go fishing with you, how much we take things for granted because. You know, when I, you fish, your home waters, you fish every day, you kind of forget. And, and right. I'm always blown away by the scenery when I fish with you. And then right. I suppose I take this fishery a little for granted at times. And, you know, it was, it was nice to see. Well, anyways, here we are. We're sturgeon fishing. And we went ahead and got one pole set out. A lot of people have been asking for more info. So I thought it'd be a great time just to, you know, you could kind of interview me. but. I gotta ask, is that your chest hair right there? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is uh, this is the uh, microphone uh, fuzz. Microphone okay. fuzz. Um, so today we're going to use two different types of rods. Uh, probably one of my favorites, second favorite behind the fish fighter, is this ugly stick by Shakespeare. This is a nine foot medium heavy. This particular rod, I have never found one in a store. Oh wow! I've had to order them all online. Um, a lot of guys ask ask me about them. Um, it's a BWS 1100. Uh, if you ever ordered it online, it's a nice low cost rod. It's been exceptional. Why do I like a nine footer in certain cases? Here in a little bit, we're going to be gunning this pole way out in that river. You know, you where you fish, you tend to anchor a lot, right? Right. Here we tie up against the shores. There's so much big rocks and boulders, so. Um, we, we need a pole that we can really gun it in this particular hole. The downside to a long rod is, you know, when you get into the boat trying to handle the fish, it's always hitting stuff. Um, a lot of where we might fish today, there'll be uh, Russian olives growing up, so we just can't get the cast, so a shorter pole. And that's why we really worked hard to develop uh, our sturgeon rod, and this is our uh, limited edition fish fighter sturgeon rod. And actually this is even an early prototype because it doesn't even have our logo on it. Um, let me get one that does. Oh, it's up here in the rod rack. Well, that's all right. Um, but 
this just goes to show how hard we test these things. But the nice thing about this rod, it's just under eight foot. It's real easy to maneuver in and around the boat. It's real lightweight. Yeah. I know you really like using it. Yeah, I like I like that it was lightweight. That's that's a, a big deal when you're walking baits back in my fishery. So. And it was very competent. You and I up in Wenatchee, we got an eight footer on this with Joe. Oh, yeah. But when it comes to reel selection, I, I just think bigger is better. Uh, right. It really kind of breaks my heart when I see guys using really small reels in this fishery because we have big fish and, and you just can't stop them, you can't turn them, yeah. and you can't get enough line capacity on it. Um, you and I talked quite a bit about mono versus Dacron or Spectra wire, and I switched to 60 pound test mono quite a few years ago. I used to use a Dacron, and what happened to me was, or what I really started noticing is like this fishery, um, we're fishing over a rock ledge. So when we've casted, this line is basically resting on a rock. Not all cases, but a lot of time. And it's just sitting there kind of sawing on it and the lines get very abraded. When I went to this 60 pound mono, it's not so much that I need it for the fish, I think 40 would work, it's to handle that abrasion. Yep. You also commented when we had a big fish on that the mono maybe is a little more forgiving because it kind of spring loads the line, right? Right. And it, it reminded me of a snubber kind of, you know, it keeps that line tight. Um, we're running barbless hooks and the, and the weight, when you're lifting that heavy weight, I, I run up to like 30 ounces of lead down there. So the, when the customers are pumping and reeling, the, that weight's going up and down and it's working on them hooks. Trying to pull the hook yeah, out so or working on them. I out. noticed that that mono has, uh, has a, lot of, a lot of stretch to it and it keeps that, that tight line all the time when you're fighting fish. Yeah, the next thing we talked a little bit about is leader length. And if you just look at this hillside and you see all of them rocks and you look along the shore there's quite a rock debris field that while I've never seen the bottom looking at my graph it just looks like this this is just all rocky bottom all through here so we're gonna run a little bit longer leader in this hole to try to get the bait up a little bit so it's not hidden up underneath some rocks right um, this particular hole there's like a big sandy spot out there that we're trying to hit um, certain areas we might shorten the leader up if we want to keep the bait closer to the ground. Rigs are a little different. You you tend to use what, 100 pound Dacron or 120 pound Dacron? Yeah, 100 uh, da uh, Spectra fibers I use a lot of. Okay, and part of the reason is, is you'll half hitch up your bait, yep. right? Yeah. And here what we like to use is, or we, uh, I, like to, I like to use thread, so um, you know, this was pretty short notice when you said you were coming through yeah. town, so I, I just grabbed some crappie that I had froze up. But if I'm going to use a herring, I'm going to, or a smelt, I'm going to hook it through the back of their head. And then I like to use thread because as I start to tie up the body, I can really mash that line into the bait. And you can half hitch it, but a lot of times you can just break it and the, the line will just uh, eat into the bait and then I hold the bait secure. The problem with like magic thread for this application is I can't get enough stretch on it and, and I end up being clear out here, you know, and, it, and it's a battle. And I, I just really like to, to use thread when I'm using a, you know, a longer piece of bait. Well, and there's a lot of thread on that spool as well, so. Yeah, it, I mean, they last forever. Yeah. Um, I, I really like that trick. I haven't seen that before, so. Um, the other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna rig with a slider. Now, everybody uses different styles. I, I used to use these green plastic ones. I really liked them. But like today, we're gonna be slinging 12 to 16 ounces of lead about as hard as we can throw it and I have had these break on me. So recently, um, I've switched to just using a smaller swivel. This bead here protects the knot, and this bead protects the end of the rod tip if somebody gets excited and they reel it up. Next thing we're gonna do is talk about dropper line. So we like to use a breakaway dropper. Again, depending on the situation. So 
Maybe on this pole, we're gonna fish a little shorter with 10, 10, 12 ounces of lead. So I'm gonna use 10 pound line. Like to take it. And I'm just gonna do two overhand loops. One, two. I'm not looking for a super strong knot because I either want the knot to fail or the line to fail. We're gonna go ahead and throttle down on this pole here to a, uh, there's a 12 ounce. We're gonna to go to a 10 ounce. And then we'll go ahead and just slip this guy through here. Double it back through itself. Boy, the breeze did is I call up. the wind or not? Yep, you did. So now we got our 10 ounce weight. And then your dropper length can vary. Now on this pole, we're gonna really be, you know, putting the wood to it. So, and we're gonna be using a bigger weight. So I'm gonna step up to 30 pound. And uh, as you were quick to point out, this is Iser line. Great yeah. guys. Uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, I know you use it quite a bit on your boat, don't you? I do. It's all I use, pretty much. So I'll go ahead and tie this on. Uh, actually, we're gonna go ahead and run a 12 ounce. Now on this one, I'm gonna put just a little bit weaker knot in it. I'm just gonna go um, two, three, four lines, and then I'm not gonna bring it back through. I'm just gonna loop it off right there. If you wanna tie that on this pole, I'll get some bait dug out. Before I do that, I wanna get my, uh, my fish fighter summer gloves on. I know that was the first thing you went for when we got here is where's the gloves? Yep. I really like the blue gloves actually in the summertime when I first heard you you guys marketing that. Um, I started paying attention and I was wearing black gloves and then I switched out to blue ones. I was like, temperature that change, totally makes it? sense. Yeah, these are a little bit bigger but uh, than I normally wear. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some bait out of here. And you know, one of the things too that people, you know, how much bait do you want at the, for the day? Um, well, you see when I went crappie fishing. <laughs> uh, but, so here's what I did. You know, I'm sure you, you must have methods as a guide all the time how much bait you need. Here's what I calculate. Um, I figure um, one fish per fisherman per hour on the water. That's how right. I calculate it. Right. So I've got enough in here for us to fish roughly six hours today, should we decide to. Right. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead. A few of you have seen how I like to do this. I just, um, this is kind of a smaller fish, so I'm gonna cut him into thirds. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go back here, cut this section off. Now there's a lot of debate, you know, uh, how to keep your fish from spinning and flipping. I've done a lot of experimenting with it. Um, personally, I like to kind of trim some of these uh, uh, fins off of them. And my theory is that this thing's gonna turn into, whoops, this thing's gonna turn into a bit of a water ski. It's gonna lay in the water and kind of plane up. If I can get it kind of centered, I'm a little bit off. Um, that it sits up. The, the thing about this bait is it, it doesn't take anything for that hook to fall out. I'm actually gonna move up. So what I started doing is using these little chunks of surgical tubing. And I'll just go ahead and grab it right here. Try to get it where the camera can see it. And then I'm just gonna push it on. And now that bait won't come off of there. And it, it's gonna last and last. Now when it comes to, I'll go ahead and do this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and do this, the head of this one. You know, it, I think you and I are both in agreement that crappie tend to, or uh, sturgeon tend to eat things head first, right? Yeah, yep. If this is small enough bait, I think you could hook it, you know, you could, you could hook it this way if you want. Um, you, I tend to be hooking them a lot more this way. And I've also found, if, so see right there, I went a little deeper. I don't have as much hook sticking out. So I started shortening that up a little more and getting a little higher in the back and I feel like I get a better hook up, if that yeah. makes sense to you. More exposed hook. More exposed hook. And you know, when you look at the size of these fish's mouth, 
they're huge. And, you know, I know you and I have also talked about, um, wash my hands real quick. We've, we've talked a lot. I'll go ahead and put this one out first and then I'll let you do that one. We've talked a lot about um, hook sizes. Um, on sturgeon, normally I smash the barbs, but on sturgeon, I buy barbless. Right. I want a totally smooth hook. I think we have a responsibility to this fishery. It's catch and release only. These fish are locked between the dams at 65 miles. So that's all this fish has to live in. And we don't need to be, especially on hot days, stressing the fish. Yeah. We don't want the hooks breaking off in them. That's just how I feel about it. And, and I think you're right there with me, right? Yeah. Yep. We want these fish to be around for a long time. So there's a big rock ledge coming out here and then the water's banking off this way. There's a pretty small sweet spot. So we're just gonna go ahead and see if we can't get to it. There we go. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and feather the line. I don't wanna give it too much slack. I wanna kinda of stay on it. There, we just Yeah, hit. you hit it good that time. So, what we're gonna do is, why don't you slide that one off and let's put it on maybe here or here, whichever way you wanna go. And then we'll put this guy at about a 45 angle. Yeah, I think we might be on the money. That looked like a good one. I'm kind of staying with it just a little bit. One last thing I thought I might do since the camera's still rolling is, you know, just kind of give you a quick overview of what, you know, a little bit about what, uh, this isn't my full tackle box, but this is what I want to show you guys is, so I've got some beads, I got some surgical tubing, big beads, um, nine aught, uh, gamagatsu hooks, barbless. I do have some barbed ones in here because uh, that's all they had at the time. Got some bait injectors, uh, some spin glows, and uh, that's pretty much what a guy needs to have a good salmon or a sturgeon tackle box. Yeah.